Hi everyone, I'm Paul and I paint miniatures and make scenery under the name of Pandemonium Miniatures. In this video I'll be reviewing a paint handle and this was sent to me by Tim Fitch who runs Miniature Heroes, a retail company who are an excellent UK source for miniature brands such as Reaper, Dark Sword and Westphalia as well as Miniature Heroes own range. Tim also stocks paints and model making products. Lately, he's been making beautiful objects out of wood, including ornaments, display plinths, and most recently, paint handles. This particular handle is the prototype of magnetic model, which after receiving feedback from myself and a few other painters, Tim has now put into production to sell on his web store. I'll be painting Radhika the Wolf during this video, but the mini isn't the main focus really, it's just my current commission and a good opportunity to try the handle out. I'm at an early stage here and I've base coated the trousers in Barrackner Burgundy. I'm now beginning to work the red up through increasingly brighter layers, starting with corn red. One virtue of the magnetized post, the magnetized handle is that I can grip it between thumb and forehand finger to twist it as I paint, allowing easy access to different parts of the area I'm painting without having to manipulate the handle around too much. I'm finding that the length of the Okay, so skipping ahead, um, I'm working into the red again, and this time I've added a bit of Mephiston red into the original corn red. Um, just to help to brighten it up, I'll eventually uh, paint with pure Mephiston red, then I'll add in some Fire Dragon Bright, and then I'll use pure Fire Dragon Bright. Um, for the highlights. Now what I've just demonstrated is that you've got the magnet in the actual base and a steel plate at the top. Um, so the plan is that you will be able to buy uh, multiple um, tops so that if you're batch painting a few figures you'll be able to mount them all on the tops and swap easily between them. So it's just enabling me to hold the model steady um, while I'm getting at some of these harder to reach areas underneath the wolf pelt. And as you can see, you can twist that head quite nicely, quite easily. enabling you to reach all of those angles without having to twist your actual wrist around. And you can see I've got the base of the handle resting against my cutting mat there. It's slightly further away from my eyes than it would be normally but that's just for the sake of keeping it in the view of the camera. So I've just added pure Mephiston red there with an old brush. I tend to cut a notch with a knife out of the bottom of the handle of my brushes when they've reached the end of their um, best life. Um, and then they get relegated to um, terrain or, or rough work or mixing paint. So 
So that extra layer of Mephiston red now is really starting to increase the contrast between the folds and the upper areas of the cloth to give that sense of light falling naturally on it. I'm adding some Fire Dragon Bright now into the Mephiston red and you can see that the handle it's very, very stable. You can rest it on the desk with no concern of it being tipped over. I'm using a size two brush, um, Rosemary & Co. I tend to use size two and three pretty much all the time. I'll occasionally get down to a, a very tiny brush if I feel like I need to but these have got such nice tips on them that you can do a lot of good detailed work even with a relatively large brush. So I'm being very sparing now with my application of this. This is kind of almost a, a warm orange now and I really only want this on the very topmost raised areas. So I'm now moving into starting to build up the highlights. So I've just added a little bit more orange into that mix. Nautily, using my best brush for that. And I'm just working that onto the folds and the top, very top areas just to get a nice highlight, a nice level of contrast. And then I'm going to work in pure Fire, Bright, Fire Dragon Bright. On areas like the knees. And just run it as a very fine line along the folds. So I'm feeling really confident doing this because I've got a really nice nice grip on the figure. Now my feeling is that having applied this to the knee, the highlight's a little stark at this stage. So all I'm going to do is just take a little bit of that orange and red mix, thin it, into a glaze and apply it over the orange that I've just put on the knee just to knock it back a little bit and that's nice and then I'll add some more orange in and there'll be a little bit of back and forth here until I'm really happy that the contrast isn't too stark but the knee is the level of brightness that I want it to be. Now the counterweight of the handle is really handy um, from the point of view of balance. So if I'm holding it in the air at the, at the point where I'm gripping it there, I've got some counterweight behind. So I feel like I've got a stable grip even if it's not necessarily braced against anything. But the fact that the top is separate is separable um, has its own virtues as I'll show you in a minute.
So again, a later stage, and this time I'm working on the wolf pelt and just bringing the uh, bringing the grey up lighter on the uppermost areas. And here you can see that I've decided to separate the base from the handle just to give me a little bit more freedom of movement to tilt it around because there's a lot of very different angles for each strand of hair on this wolf pelt and um, sometimes I might want that extra little bit of flexibility. And here's the finished figure. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to put some links up um, so you to show you where the where you can buy the handle, um, and I might put a few other pr other links up for any other products I may have inadvertently mentioned. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed that, please uh, please go and buy a handle from Tim. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. They are really very good. And um, I look forward to my next video.